Our own Michelle Seven was jailed and a discussion with other formerly jailed activists. Hello and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm your anchor Heike Corser. Today's show will be one focused on individuals arrested recently and jailed for civil disobedience or living free. Regardless of your stance on the issue, civil disobedience has been used many times in the past to send a message to the governing authorities that the tyranny is too great. Lysander Spooner, Gandhi, and Rosa Parks are all famous individuals who one day said no to those men with guns in a badge. Our first guest tonight is Ian Freeman, owner of Freekeen.com and host of Free Talk Live, a nationally syndicated talk show that is broadcast on over 100 stations daily. Ian has had several encounters with the local law enforcement. In the following video, you will see his first arrest at Keene District Court, as well as the arrest that landed him in jail for 58 days. Thank you. Is it Ian Bernard? Ian Bernard? I'm Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a are you, seat are now. You, are you making an offer? Have a seat. I'll be doing that under duress. Take him into custody. Yes, sir. All right. I'm under duress. Okay. I'm just going to have you stand for I'm just going to have you push behind you. Operating okay. under duress. Okay. I understand. We're here at Central Square, and over a year ago, I was arrested uh, for standing in front of a police car as the King police were attempting to kidnap a peaceful young lady, uh, Heike, who was enjoying an alcoholic beverage here in the park on a Sunday afternoon. Ian gave a spirited, spirited defense. Uh, so the jury did find Ian Freeman uh, not guilty of um, resisting arrest. Uh, that was clear in the video that was shown. However, they did find him guilty of obstructing um, their uh, kidnapping of uh, Heike Corser from the park that day. We'll be there to visit, man, and we'll call. We love you, dude. Yeah, yeah, man. We love you, dude. You guys gotta think about your actions, man. See you, man. We love you, dude. Clearly, the public doesn't appreciate this. Our discussion panel tonight will start out with Michelle Seven, Ian Freeman, and also joining us, Jason Talley. Ian, can you tell the viewers a little about yourself? Sure. Well, I mean, as you mentioned, uh, I am the host of one of the hosts of Free Talk Live, uh, which is actually on right now, and I'm also one of the bloggers over at FreeKeen.com. I've lived in Keen since 2006. Well, and you've been quite active ever since then. You moved here because of the Free State Project, I believe, right? That's right, uh, which for those that don't know is a movement of thousands, hopefully, of liberty-minded people all converging to one place, and New Hampshire was the chosen place, and I think that's the reason why you guys are here as well. Right. right. And you um, actually were standing in front of that police car uh, in protest of our Ms. Heike Corser being arrested for drinking an adult beverage in Keene Square. So it's not just liberty activists that have moved here from elsewhere, but those there are those liberty activists that are from Keene that are, are getting involved in the action too. Right, I think some of the uh, part of the idea of the, the Free State Project is to kind of give um, a backup to the people that are already in New Hampshire that love freedom. Uh, because maybe they felt like that things have been going in the wrong direction. You know, maybe too many people who don't like freedom have been moving to New Hampshire and have been changing things here. Uh, so a lot of uh, New Hampshire natives and people that have been here much longer than the Free State Project has existed appreciate the fact that uh, people like us are coming here. And Heike is uh, is one of those folks. In fact, I think that the New Hampshire natives are the most active and the most uh, excited about these ideas. It's, it's almost like a, a shot. The Free State Project is almost like a shot in the arm mm -hmm. for the people that love liberty in New Hampshire because essentially they've got backup now. Right. right. It, it must be pretty exciting for uh, people that have lived in New Hampshire that are liberty activists to then be surrounded by new uh, people that are engaged and are um, trying to uh, pursue more liberty as well. I think that's true. So, um, well, why did you think that it was so important to act that day uh, by sitting in front of the police car? Good question. It actually goes back to my inspiration, which was uh, David Krauss. And I don't think y'all have had him on yet, but he is, you know, he's an incredible activist who was also inspired by Gandhi and uh, those that had gone before. Uh, and David, uh, back in, I think it was 2009, 
uh, at the 420 celebration that was happening in, Na in Nashua, uh, he stood in front of a, or sat actually, in front of a police car when they were arresting a peaceful young man uh, for smoking cannabis at a park in Nashua. And when I saw that, because I wasn't actually able to be there that day, I was out of the state, uh, but when I saw the video footage of that, I, I found it so inspirational. I thought, wow, I've, I've got to do that. I've, I've got to emulate uh, what he is, he's done. So, I mean, it was actually his idea, and I'm sure he borrowed it from somebody else uh, in the past as well. And I just I thought, the next time that I see the police doing something with which I disagree, which is usually arresting someone who's being peaceful, and in this case, Heike was totally peaceful, enjoying her afternoon in the park, uh, I said to myself, the next time I see that happen, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand in front of a police car. And so this was just my first opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy to hear you say that you had determined that the next time you saw something, you were going to act. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone needs to have a, their line in the sand or, right. you know, that point where if you cross this, then I'm going to respond. Yeah, I didn't know what it was going to be, right? It was just the next time I saw something, so that's what I did. And then you were joined by three other people, I believe, to uh, stand in front of the police cars, essentially Correct. stating that you didn't want them to uh, harm peaceful people, right? Yeah, I mean, I, it was a really hectic situation where the police totally could have went away. I mean, they didn't have to do what they were doing. In fact, it almost seemed like they didn't want to because it took them about 15, 20 minutes to actually finally get to the point of arresting Heike. They wanted her to give up her name and information, and she wasn't interested in, in cooperating to that extent. So that's why they, they ended up arresting her. And there was a point at which in the video, which I think is available somewhere at freekeen.com, where people actually took a vote. Like, how many people want the police to go away? And of course, everybody wanted them to go away. They were the ones that were causing the problem. They were the ones that were causing the disruption. Uh, any, you know, any commotion that was happening in the park that afternoon was because of the Keene Police Department. Seems to be a problem between um, people that are hired to be uh, both law enforcers and peace officers. If there are peace officers, well, they wouldn't do anything because they, the, the law enforcers that they were the ones breaking the peace. Um, I mean, it, I saw the videos, I wasn't there, but uh, Heike, you know, was just enjoying a, a nice day and was enjoying a, a cold beverage. Yep. It was an alcoholic beverage, but there are restaurants that yeah, are outside. Yeah, 50 feet from several different uh, restaurants where you can legally buy a beverage sure. so that the state says you can have one here but not here as if yeah. that really makes a difference. Well, the open container ordinance, which is the one that was in question that day, is clearly something that the police can use to discriminate against people they don't like. So they want to go after a homeless person, for instance, or maybe young people or whatever. The people they want to target, they're going to go after. You're not going to see them with a, uh, a crew out of the country club walking or on a golf course to, to bust those guys for mm -hmm. drinking. Uh, that's just not going to happen. That's a good mm -hmm. point. You mentioned the, uh, the Nashua 420 event. That was actually around the time where Michelle <coughs> moved to New Hampshire, and, and same with me, and I actually covered that. That was the first bit of activism that I got to see, was um, about 100 people going to that uh, park. The Nashua law enforcers arrested this young black man. Lewis. Uh, Lewis, right. And uh, you saw all of these liberty activists um, respond either with video cameras or just speaking out, speaking their conscience. And then David Krause, like you said, did sit in front of the police car with some other people. Yep. With Catherine Bleich, I believe. Right, Catherine Bleich. She yes. didn't stand in front of the police car, but she was arrested. Yes. Yeah. She was there um, asking the police questions with her video camera. Well, uh, how many days did you serve in jail? 58. It was 58. a 90, it was a 360 day sentence. Uh, with 270 suspended, which means that those, that's still kind of hanging out there. So if I get arrested for a misdemeanor, a felony, or a major motor vehicle, they can just bring that back and I can go right back in for another nine months. Mm -hmm. So it ended up being a 90-day active sentence. And then there's a two-thirds rule in New Hampshire where if you're a good little boy or girl in jail, uh, then they'll let you out at two-thirds of the sentence. So, uh, so I, I guess we can um, thank Keen for the... Uh, the money that, that you all contribute in order to keep the jail, the House of Corrections open so that we can take peaceful people and have them arrested for and jailed for 58 days for the crime of standing in front of a police car for 45 seconds. Thank you. Back to you, Heike. Our next video features footage from a previously recorded episode of Free Keen TV and details Jason Talley's run in with court security. And Jason Talley of Talley TV went into the same court this past Friday and was arrested for having a camera. He is here to talk to us about the ruling and to share what happened to him. My experience started on a Friday morning when I went to uh, film a trial. I've uh, filmed in courtrooms all over New Hampshire. 
It says, a citizen's right to film government officials, including law enforcement officers, in the discharge of their duties in a public space is a basic, vital, and well-established liberty safeguarded by the First Amendment. And I totally agree. I think it's important to uh, keep government officials um, on the record as much as possible. And uh, they treated me pretty poorly when I was trying to hold them accountable. Um, and actually, the camera that I had on me is about the, the size of my thumb. Uh, and it's also used by law enforcement to uh, keep their interactions with the public uh, more transparent. Well, Jason Talley, you are the first person who I actually had any sort of um, interaction with uh, that was associated with the Free State Project or liberty movement, liberty activism um, here in New Hampshire. And that was uh, back uh, two years ago when you, a little over two years ago, when you interviewed me regarding tax resisting. And so you right. and Motor Home Diaries at the time, mm -hmm. which included Pete Air and Adamo Freeman, who are now with Liberty on Tour, mm -hmm. you all had started filming and interviewing, things like that. So you've been doing that for a few years now. How'd you get started? Um, I got started because I think a video is a great way to communicate um, stories and, and messages, and I'm, I'm big into multimedia. And so, like you said, for about a year, I traveled the country with Motorhome Diaries, uh, interviewing uh, liberty activists uh, such as yourself. And then I moved to the Shire when I keep uh, taking video, and people know I usually keep a camera on me, a lot of times three different cameras. Um, and so it's, it's a different experience to walk into court and they tell me, uh, remove your camera. Uh, and this is a court lobby that has six, eight cameras, you know, mounted all over the place. Uh, all Point, the pointed at you. Pointed at me, pointed right. at their employees. You know, everybody should be familiar with cameras uh, being pointed at them. Uh, and then I come in with a, uh, a camera the size of my thumb and uh, I get uh, arrested. They try to uh, take the camera, they, they succeeded. You weren't even filming yet at this time, right? Um, I'd like to see that footage back uh, from them. They confiscated the camera, so there, there may or may not be footage, but they haven't released that uh, back to me yet. But uh, yeah, so they end up handcuffing me. Um, when I was trying to do business at the clerk's window, they handcuffed me and then um, I uh, sit down because I don't want to assist in my own kidnapping. And one of the bailiffs decides it'd be a good idea to take the chain with the handcuffs and drag me across the floor. So the state right there has already, at that point, uh, participated in theft of your possessions and uh, physical violence against your person. Yeah, uh, cut my arms and uh, bruise them as well. well and you're, you're the criminal. It's all okay, because a man in a robe wrote some stuff down on a piece of paper that said that they can do that. That's, uh, that's what I, I've learned. Even though New Hampshire has laws that uh, state that you uh, can audio, video, photograph uh, court doc, or I'm sorry, any government documents, the court, it seems, can make up whatever rule they want, and it has the power of law. That's what I'm, I've learned since uh, this incident. Even though the Glick uh, decision that was supposed to cover all of New England said that filming public officials and police in particular um, during the course of their duties is legal and a protected right under the First Amendment, correct? It's confusing, uh, there, uh, but that is a federal law, so um, I have to take this to a jury trial first, and then um, hopefully I'm successful, but then it has to be appealed to the Supreme Court of New Hampshire, because really they're the only ones that can overturn the uh, Superior Court ruling. And if I want to take it to the federal court, it would be to that, um, that uh, district court that would hopefully uh, take our side and um, side in favor of a transparent government and more media. Well, this is just crazy. I appreciate you being here, though. I appreciate you filming and filming me and filming all that's going on. Thank you so much. It's, it's something I think is important. Derek J. Freeman is normally the technical director of the show and live switches the video in the control room. He will be joining us in the next segment, but first, a video summary of his three arrests in Keene. So, apparently Jason was just threatened if he didn't turn off his camera. I want to go see what this is about. Because, like, he told you, like, 30 seconds and it was almost like two minutes for the camera and this one they've been turning. There is no video Especially audio three. allowed in this lobby. There isn't? Now shut it off, you go and get arrested. What, the what's, the where's the statute? It's right on the wall. Oh. Shut Can you show off. me? I said. Can you show me where it is on the wall? Arrest. 
No, sir. Okay. I just want to see where the law is. You want to do it right? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I have work today. Well, this is... You ain't going to make it. You got your what? No, 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 no. Wait. Put it on the counter. Now. Wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Let's just be friends here. Like, stop! Hey! Stop! On what ground? Stop! On what ground? Hey! Whoa! Hey, 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 hey! Let go! Hey! 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 Leave him alone, man! He's not doing... Anything, you smart boss! Hey! Get back! Sir, let go of the bag! Get your f***ing this one off the street! We really, we really f***ing appreciate it. You really got one. You got a real bad criminal here. There you go, don't you? Obstruction. I don't, I don't want to get in the car. I got you on camera. Electrical! No, we have you on camera. We have you on camera doing what you're doing. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! 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 Pepper spray. He did hey, nothing. Oh my God! You guys just pepper sprayed a guy who was in handcuffed. All we are saying is give peace a chance. All we are saying is give peace a chance. All I am saying. Give peace a chance. All I right. My dear friend, Derek J. Yes, uh, so that was a couple of incidents. Um, but yeah, I spent some time in the, the Cheshire County House of Corrections. For, Have you been corrected? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know yet. I, I guess that's up to the state to decide, but... You had a clear goal. You wanted to have a dance party at one time. Right. Another time you wanted to be able to film. Another time you wanted to be able to, um, you know, uh, ingest cannabis because this is your body and you're free to do that. And whereas the, the state says alcohol is okay and it even sells alcohol, it says that a, a, a weed, a plant, uh, is not okay. So you, there was a clear goal what do you think the police and the House of Corrections goal was for you? Well, uh, for them, I don't think they consider their actions further than following the orders of the higher-ups. Um, for me, my goal is to live a free life, um, to live my life as uh, free and happy as, as I want to live it. As long as I'm not intruding on the rights of others, I, I feel like I'm doing the right thing. In the instance where I was smoking, cop, uh, smoking cannabis next to a cop, I had actually asked him while he was sitting next to me if he would mind if I smoked because he wanted to be courteous. That's what a person does um, when you're when you're being polite. So he he said um, that that he uh, didn't mind and that I could do whatever I wanted. And <laughs> so I took that to mean that you know I I I felt free to do that action also. Sure. Uh, I felt free to have a dance party until I was um, my property was stolen by a keen police officer and uh, I was walked over to a police car, I told him I didn't want to step inside and that I felt like I was being kidnapped. And um, while I was repeating that I felt like I was being kidnapped, uh, he decided that w the right thing to do would be to mace me. And so, so take pepper spray, spray it into your eyes mm -hmm. where maybe there isn't any permanent damage, but you certainly have pain and blurred vision and you it's are... It's extremely painful, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I was incapacitated for sure. Um, and I, I just thought it was a, an amazing turn of events for a dance party to turn into something like that. Uh, people were having a good time, and it was really it was only until the boys and in we blue showed up. And right. Um, and it wasn't it. it you couldn't even hear the music outside of uh, Central Square. No, I, I can't imagine there could have been any actual noise complaint um, by an individual. It seemed like the cops had just driven by, and they said, "Here's an opportunity to." mess with some kids. Um, and there that's is, how it seemed to me. I'm sorry, there is noise that goes on there um, when the city or the, or the state allows for it to have, you know, concerts and things. So it's not like it's, there's a quiet ordinance there, right? The week before there had been uh, several sound complaints uh, because of 
Keynes Music Festival. All of those um, went unattended to because the music festival has a government issued permit. Mm. I had no such permit. I didn't ask permission. But um, are you going to ask permission next time? Oh no. You're going to keep I doing what you're doing? I don't think I need to ask anyone's permission to live free. Awesome. <laughs> In our final video, Michelle Seven is accompanied to jail as she turns herself in to serve her sentence. We're going to the Cheshire County House of Corrections because I was sentenced to two and a half days in jail in lieu of paying the hundred and thirty or so dollar fines for not registering my vehicle. I simply think that I, as a human being, I'm free. And as long as I'm not harming anyone, and as long as I'm self-sufficient and paying my own way, I just think that I should be left alone. And basically, the two rules, you know, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself, really ought to be able to encompass all of the law. I refuse to pay the state. I don't condone what it is they're doing, putting peaceful people in jail who have not committed any violent crimes. So I spend $150 a week or so on gas and about half of that goes to fuel tax. Vehicle registration fees for the state of New Hampshire do not go to the roads. I'm not interested in what the general fund provides. My kids don't go to the schools. I don't use any uh, social services. I don't think of myself as a criminal and someone that needs to be locked away to protect other people. I didn't harm anyone. The real crime is touching people and hurting them against their will and stealing. I didn't do either one of those things. The state's doing that to me. And yet I'm the criminal. I want to leave the world a better place than I found it. We're at the Cheshire County House of Corrections in Keene, New Hampshire on this beautiful October day. Yes. Yeah. After getting to know Michelle, um, which she's quick to, to allow you to do, she's really personable and she's just an ordinary person, a mom, who has lots of responsibilities and doesn't include having to jump through hoops for the state and uh, now they're forcing her with guns to come so that she can be held captive for who knows how long. Should we go say hi to the people inside? If you'd like. Yeah. Yes. And look at those shoes. Yes. Great nice place. <laughs> they will take those away. Yes, they will. As miserable as that is, think about the people in Guantanamo that the United States government is holding there against their will without any formal charges against them. They're deprived of uh, light. They wear goggles and they're mm -hmm. in the dark. You'll at least have light, probably too much light, fluorescent light. Yeah. As unhappy as I am to be doing this, you know, I don't think, I'm not thinking of it as being a martyr, certainly. But just, you know, choosing the lesser of two evils. So I will, you know, absorb some of the state's money, I guess. And they're going to absorb some of your time. And uh, they're going to take you away from the community, from your children, and I think they're they're intent on uh, correcting you. It's Friday yeah. at uh, five five p.m. There's a woman putting on gloves. Oh no. She, she said, uh, way.
Do you want to support good people who disobey bad laws? The civil disobedience evolution. So, yep, that's me, the jailbird. So, uh, Michelle, just to remind us, uh, why again did the uh, Cheshire County uh, law enforcement, why did they want you to be corrected? Why did they put you in the cage for a day? Well, initially I had um, pled not guilty to a vehicle registration violation, of which I have um, collected uh, uh, many. Now, uh, since my son received two tickets that day while I was in jail, we now have 11, mm. including the one that he has. All um, because that your vehicles have not been registered? Yes, I don't register my vehicles. I don't think that I need to ask permission to drive on the road. I pay taxes, which pay for the roads to be maintained. But doesn't that make you dangerous? <laughs> you a dangerous driver? Well, the, the uh, police seem to think so, so they keep ticketing me, and um, I refuse to pay the 108 plus $25 uh, fee for the violation, and so I was awarded two and a half days in the House of Corrections for that. And so like you mentioned earlier in this episode, um, that's how we met, because of your income tax resistance, and um, you're taking the moral stance that you do not want to fund the government. Why is that? I think the government, by definition, is coercive. I say, you know, the federal state government. I believe in self-government. I happen to, you know, I've mentioned lots of times that I'm a Christian, so I happen to, you know, for myself, you know, submit to what I consider my eternal authority, but as far as like interactions amongst people on this earth, I subscribe to the idea that self-government and voluntary interactions are the only moral option and that it's fine to make um, voluntary uh, community societies and things and that as long as you can opt out of those, then those are also moral and as long as you don't force other people to belong to them or pay for them, then they are know those things can be moral so um, I just want to be able to opt out now, don't you feel like the car registration the whole thing is basically a control program and it really has nothing to do with safety absolutely about compliance absolutely about it's it's a money generator for the state of New Hampshire and and I understand that you know the state of New Hampshire doesn't impose sales tax or income tax and things like that and they you know but and I've actually heard government people say make it sound like they're doing me a favor well, we don't tax you this, we don't tax you that, as if it, they're entitled and, and own my property. So tell us about the, uh, the time that you spent uh, in a cage. I heard that you didn't process, so what was that like? I didn't process, I don't think we have so I it. didn't eat and I slept on a cold concrete floor without food for 24 hours. Mm, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You can contact Freekeen TV by sending an email to tv at freekeen.com. Tune in next Monday at 7 for the next episode. This is Heike Corser saying goodnight and happy Halloween! Oh,